Hello crafty friend, it's Justine. Today I'm going to make a Santa Christmas card using this new die that's from Spellbinders and I'm also using a very old die. <sighs> you guys, I'm very disappointed. This is now discontinued, this die, and when I started planning this video, I did not know that it was discontinued, but <sighs> I am very sad about it. It is one of my favorite stitching dies, the Stitched Ovals. It was part of a monthly subscription a few years ago, so I get why it's discontinued, but it's so fabulous. So maybe you have it in your collection. Maybe you don't. You could recreate this one using another oval die and just adding stitching if you want or just keeping it as a simple oval. It's really up to you, but I have just loved that die for so many years now <laughs> and have made I don't even know how many cards. If I had to estimate maybe 80 to 90 cards with that die, I know. I just, I'm obsessed with those ovals and stitching the flowers has brought me so much joy, so much relaxation, and I've just really loved it. So I digress. Moving on to some new stuff. This die is the Bottle Brush Trees, which is so so neat. I really like that there's a background and then a more detailed section to the die. Oh boy, my glue is smushing. You know, this is one of those dies where I am going to use those clear sticky sheets or the sticker sheets next time I use this die because it is so elegant and detailed that when I use my liquid glue, it gets a little smushed. But we're all friends here and I'm sure that your glue smushes sometimes too. So <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. But I am looking forward to trying some of those sticker sheets. I just ordered some this morning so they will be coming in a few days but we'll see. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, there's these, there are these sticker sheets where you put it right on the paper and then die cut after and then your die basically becomes a sticker, which is super cool. There's also sticker machines that you can run anything through and it can become a machine, a sticker, which I had when I was a kid. I think my mom used it for scrapbooking, so I don't have that anymore. I'm sure within time things break and such, but that sticker paper is pretty cost effective. I think it was under $10 and no machine was needed. So I figured let's give it a try and then I can show you next time I have an intricate die like these fun trees. So the main event on this card is of course the Santa Claus and he's just really cute. So I spent so long looking at the inspiration sheet and then looking at this piece and I just could not figure out which way to go. Um, and I did figure it out. It goes this way. So Santa looks like a little turkey with the, the, these are the bottom parts of his legs. So if you think turkey, you're going to get the right placement, which sounds kind of goofy, but just go with it. <laughs> this Santa die is part of the classic Christmas and it's called Santa's Here. So if you are going to make this along with me, that would be super fun. So if you are, go ahead and get all your die cut pieces made ahead of time. For the white pieces, I die cut out, here I'll show you. I die cut out the face and all the hair in white and then I colored the face and the nose with a Copic marker. And then there's this little piece here that's for the mouth. Oops. And it's just so teeny tiny, but I <laughs> colored it light gray. You can see it there. Look how tiny that is. <laughs> anyway, so much detail. And then there's arms, legs, the whole kit and caboodle. So we're just going to start from the center in because I think the body will give us um, some somewhere to go here. So first for the body, I'm going to glue down this white looks like an L or a backwards L um, looks like an L when you have it this way <laughs> piece which is kind of like the fur on his coat and that is going to go right here I'm gonna line it up with that area right there that looks like it's the same 
shape like so give it a little wiggle and that's going to just line up right there next to the other piece so it looks like he has a coat that opens up like that then I'm going to put the belt down and that's this black strip and that's going to go on the waist part so you can see there's an, a little indent there there's two indents and then a bulging area and that's where you line up the belt then to make the belt look super super sharp we're gonna put this little belt buckle on and I die cut that and the accents for his shoes in gold mirror cardstock and there is a right and wrong side to put this so I just will line it up with the belt there like so next I think I want to do the feet so I am going to put those on kind of precariously I'm going to put them on with the black part on the back of the legs because it will get covered up with the white fluffy part of the boot so I'm just going to do it just like that and then his other foot is going to go right about there those cute little stubby legs <laughs> okay and then I'll put the white part over the boots and that's going to kind of hide the seam of the boots and the legs. The boot pieces look like thick smiley faces. If I would describe them, that's what I would say. <clears throat> for my tools for putting little pieces together like this, I like to use my reverse tweezers and my gem picker upper, which is nothing fancy, but it does a great job helping me <laughs> keep things in line. Okay, the next part of the shoe is putting down the two gold accent pieces, and I only see one here, so maybe one will show up once I keep going, but I don't know. It might have to be a Christmas miracle moment. I'll just put on one for now, and if I find the other one, fabulous. If not, I will probably be die cutting. <laughs> another one out okay there's that and then next I'm going to do the arms I think let's put on this arm which is the long one is the one I'm going to use today because this is going to be kind of Santa saying hello I did not plan to use the bell so the bell is a pretty self-explanatory for putting together, so if you have questions, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, um, you can look on the inspiration sheet and you'll see it there too. I'm just going to have him raising his arm up as if he were saying hello or like waving Merry Christmas to someone. <laughs> and then this is the part that's going to be a little tricky here. Let's get the sack on the other side here. And the sack goes behind him, kind of like that. I used this cardstock that has a texture to it, and I thought that would be kind of fun for his little gift of toys, sack of toys. Just like that. And I'm going to have it go over his shoulder a little, just like the inspiration sheet. Then I'm going to put the arm down to cover up where that meets so it looks like he is actually holding it. We're going to use another brown piece that is going to go over his shoulder. Luckily his beard is going to cover up a lot of the spaces that need help. <laughs> okay, next is the collared area. Or the cuff and that goes like this and then I'm going to use the hand that is kind of squished like this as if he is firmly grasping the bag of goodies and I'm actually going to put that behind the hand so 
right about here on the bag is where he's gripping it. So I'm gonna put the hand like this so it looks like it's clasping the sack and it's gonna go like that. And I'm not even worried about this lining up because we're gonna have the beard cover that up. We love a good beard, don't we? <laughs> I've really enjoyed using this collection, the classic Christmas or classical Christmas, because it has so many fun things and it has dyes, stencils. I just did a video with stencils on Sunday, so if you're interested, check that out. And I've been using the embossing folder from that so many times. It's the one with the ornaments on it. I'll just put a picture on the screen of that whole collection and then a link in the description of that collection so you can see what's all in it. All right, there's his face. I really do like coloring Copic markers on the white paper because it's just so much easier to add the color to white cardstock than it is to find the perfect paper. Sometimes you don't have the right color cardstock and maybe you're someone who would be in that position and then just go buy your own cardstock that matches that. Or maybe you are crafting on a budget like me and <laughs> don't have every color under the sun. So you're gonna make your own with some Copic markers. You could do that with cardstock you can just kind of get creative. You can do that with Copic markers, you can do that with colored pencils, uh, really any marker actually, but then you can die cut anything you want, which is kind of neat. This hat is looking a little lumpy, so I'm not sure what I did here. Maybe I put his face down too low. It's kind of like he has no neck. Maybe if I just keep going, it'll get better once I add his face. Okay, things are looking better. I think I was just being goofy. Oh, I know what it is, the hat. So on the inspiration sheet, they have the pom-pom on the back of his hat string and not the front. So that's what I'll do here. And it just makes his hat look a little longer, I think. Yes, that definitely looks good. Okay, perfect. Making things happen here. <laughs> and then for the back of his eyes, I was going to see how it's placed on the card. If there are, if the black background is there already, I don't have to worry about that really at all, but let's just see. Okay, mustache. Mustache is next. And then we'll do the mouth and the nose. And then I gotta go back to his arm because I was totally sidetracked and forgot about the arm. Oh, that is so cute. We love a mustache. Okay, <laughs> nose. <laughs> Usually people don't have mustaches going above their nose. There we go. And then the mouth, which is going to go in the little arc of the mustache. This is so teeny tiny. Oh, that is looking so cute. Okay, next I'm gonna do the arm, which I think I planned out two of these hands because I didn't know which one I wanted to use. And I think I will use this other one here. That way it looks like the hand is coming from the cuff area. Me, that makes sense. Oh, he is looking so cute. Okay, now for the eyes, like I said, I just kind of die cut these out. I don't know. I think I'm going to skip them. And oh, those are the eyebrows. Are these eyebrows? What are these? These must be paper that go behind the eyes to make the eyes. But I'm just going to use a black piece of scrap. This is from my advent card video. And I think that skinny strip is going to fit perfectly on the back of Santa's face here. So I'm just going to put a little glue down, make him look like a raccoon, and then glue it on his face. 
like this. Oh, that looks so good. Okay. <laughs> I love him. Okay. Now, like I said, this die is discontinued, but the paper I used to cut it is not. So you can see this one is a matte cardstock. This is from Spellbinders. This brushed cardstock is also from Spellbinders and it is black as well. So <clears throat> if you're interested in picking up those papers, I would definitely recommend the Spellbinders papers. They are just, frankly speaking, superior. You can glimmer on them and they are thick so it's nice to stitch with them. I just, I love their paper. Plus their brushed cardstock, like the one I used for the oval, has just such a pretty sheen, a pretty shine to it. And if you know me, you know that I love the mirrored cardstock, so <laughs> that is just so beautiful. And other mirrored cardstocks from other companies are not double-sided mirror, which I find odd. So I, I like that about Spellbinders papers. Okay, enough about the paper. Let's just get my background on here. And once this is on, I can go ahead and place my trees and my Santa tentatively where I want them. I chose black because you know, Santa comes at night, so that made sense to me. Should I do a snowy hill for him to stand on? I think it needs that. Yes, it does. Oh, and I didn't do the other gold part for his shoe. You know, I think it's going to be fine because I think my sentiment is going to go where his feet are anyway. Yeah. Okay, well, that was a happy accident. Just like Bob Ross says happy accident that we don't have the other piece for the shoe okay I need some white scrap to make my snow okay now for this part I'm going to sneak the trees behind the oval once I am done putting the oval on so I'm gonna put the glue just on the edges of the stitched piece and that is plenty of glue it will hold even though I'm not gluing in on the stitching or in the center of these areas it'll be fine plus it will give me a little area to tuck my little things in so the trees are going to go kind of in there so I'm gonna just sneak the glue behind the tree now that it's placed and a little will hold it it's a tiny piece of paper well not tiny but it's not heavy it's not going anywhere and this one will go on this side probably should have waited to put the glue down just so oh good it didn't smear okay I put the smaller one in the background just for perspective and whatnot I mean this is not fine art here people but we're trying okay I'm gonna have Santa be kind of here. Should I have him popped up? Why not? Let's use some foam squares and pop up Santa. This Santa die would be so cute to die cut out like this and then glue on a solid piece of cardstock and then fussy cut out and use as a gift tag. I think that would be so cute. As I was holding this, taking all of the foam squares off, I was looking at it thinking, gift tag. Alrighty. <laughs> now I can put Santa down. I'm going to have him kind of popped up and out of the oval as if he was coming out. Oh, that is so cool. I love this. <laughs> okay. And now I'll put down my glimmered sentiment. I glimmered this one a whole bunch of times, this Christmas blessings. It's just, honestly, I think my favorite Christmas sentiment that Spellbinders has. It just came out with Yana's collection this month with her Delightful Christmas collection, which is just so beautiful. And I used it so, so much. And I just, I think it's gonna be one that I just go back to over and over and over again because it is just such a pretty glimmer plate. Just sneak those foam squares right behind there. 
Hooray! I definitely love the look of this so far. Okay, now I just can't help myself and I think I need to add a bit of bling. Speaking of the stitching areas, I did stitch every other area to look like a little peppermint candy just because that's kind of Christmassy and I just kind of went with it. <laughs> no, not every one of the stitched areas on the bottom will have a rhinestone, just the ones that may be a little visible to the viewer. There you have it. It might be a little too blingy for some people, but to me, I just love <laughs> the shine and glitter of it all. So to me, it is just right. If you are interested in more stitching videos, I will have my big stitching update video out tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow. So if you're interested, come on back to my channel. I have a ton of stitching that I did over vacation more that I have not even shown on camera yet. So come on back tomorrow for my stitched update video. I have a lot, like I said. So something's bound to catch your eye and maybe inspire you to go into your own stash and pull out some of your stitching dies that you haven't used in a while. I also am pairing some new products as well. So like I said, if you're interested, check it out tomorrow on my channel. Again, thank you so much for watching and subscribing. I really appreciate you. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.